Hey, hello, this is Bill. I got a great side, you know, the holidays coming up and yeah, going, oh, geez, I don't know. And you know, it's really funny that depending on the size, you know, the group that I'm dealing with, sometimes it's really fun to make a bunch of different sides because you know, I like broccoli, they don't like broccoli, I like spinach, they don't like spinach, you know, cow, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But if you have a couple different veggies, um, you know, maybe a couple different types of potatoes, and I'm going to do a potato one coming up real soon uh, that I think you really like. I've done my mashed potatoes and everyone loves that. But <coughs> this is different. So I think until I was uh, in my 20s, I didn't know that there was any other way to make cream spinach than cream mushroom soup. <coughs> Went down the wrong pipe. Anyway. So, um, <clears throat> I was working with a, with a real chef and he's like, uh, you know, talking about how they make, you know, about things, to, you know, good, good sides and stuff. And he says, well, of course, don't you know that cream mushroom soup, I mean, cream spinach, you just, you make your own, like, roux thing. And I'm like, mm, it's got to be a different way. And then I did make it that way for a while. But then I was like, hey, I know there's better stuff out there. So I think it was, gosh, time flies, like two years ago, um, I was experimenting and actually I had my, my sister and my brother-in-law coming over for dinner and I, was, I think it was probably the second or third time I'd, I'd made this cream spinach and they're like, wow, this is really great. And I was like, great, I won. So I need to kind of package this up and, and make it. So. I'm going to get started here, and I've got three tablespoons of butter. It's just about melted completely. It's starting to, so I know it's good. And I did something different because I'm really, I really tell people I use leftovers. I do. Well, I cut up a bunch of, or sliced a bunch of onion for sandwiches or something, and um, it didn't all get eaten. Right, so wrapped it in plastic. All I did was I like cut it into wedges. And if you want, you know, really fine chopped onion, so be it, you can do that. But also, you know, okay, I like onion, I like the size of it. Now, keep in mind that the spinach is going to kind of vanish into this whole thing, so there is going to be a heavy presence of onion. But I like that, I think that's okay. Just want to get this starting to rock and roll here. And once it softens, it's going to be okay. So we're really trying to get this, and these are all sorts of odd sizes and. Everyone would say, oh, you can't do that. Well, no, you can't. You, you really can. There's no, there's no law. Sheriff's not going to come and arrest me because I didn't cut the onion all the same size. So, um, what do you got left over? Don't throw it in the garbage. Save it. Now, mind you, I don't, I'm not going to save sliced onion in the refrigerator for a week. Because um, it wouldn't be great. But I knew, as I was like cleaning up after dinner the other day, I was like, hey, I'm going to be making cream spinach this weekend, so I'm just going to hold on to these onion slices. Just want to get them started. Pretty good heat going here. That's so why the first time I made this, I really loved it, and I didn't remember what I put in it, so. It was pretty funny. I mean, I recollected, uh, you know, about what it was, but it was really funny trying to come up with all the portions for this. Um, and then by the time I made it for, for dinner for my sister and her husband, uh, we were just utterly so impressed with this, let me tell you. And they're big foodies, so that, that says a lot. All right, so now we've got it just starting to turn color. And, of course, we want garlic in here. 
So I've minced up like four cloves of garlic and I don't want to over cook it. But I think now's an okay time. So I'm just going to get it in here. It takes like half a second for it to hit that heat, that hot oil, and it's just like, mmm, fragrance. Whew. Love the smell, love the smell. Okay, so I'm going to turn it down just a hair because I really don't want to fry it. all mixed together. Alright, so now i got to think about what do I want to make like the flavor profile of this, right? So, I have, first of all, going to add some ground pepper. And this is one time where, don't be shy, you know, we want some nice fresh ground pepper. We need that to really stand out. If you don't like pepper, well, you could probably not use it, but, but I mean, this is like, you know, 20 twists of garlic. I mean, of pepper. I'm staring at the garlic. And then, my secret is, I have half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And... I have a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now, it's not going to be really hot with that cayenne, but if you don't really want that, certainly back off to a pinch and start there. You can always add, you know, more later, right? This is the chance where you get to kind of mix everything together. And we're really kind of roasting out that nutmeg and that cayenne pepper. And this is where the flavor profile is really growing. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really intoxicating to smell this, let me tell you. Okay, now before everything gets too carried away and cooked, here's the fun part. So, I got some baby spinach. I got two bags of baby spinach. But we know when it starts to wilt into nothing, it's definitely going to disappear. I think I can get one whole bag in here. If not, I'll just start stirring and. Yeah, it'll. That was easy. It's really funny. As soon as you start stirring it, it's amazing how it's just going to start to wilt into nothing. Just get my heat. And everyone's like, oh, two bags of spinach, that's going to make a lot. No, trust me, because the spinach is wilting. If it weren't for the the garlic and the onion kind of holding the body of it, uh, you wouldn't have anything left. Okay. Look at that, it's already reducing. So I don't want to wait too long, so let me get about half the second bag. Now I need a little, a little help. I want to kind of steam this down. And so I've got some red wine vinegar. I use red wine vinegar instead of salt. You really don't need salt, but I want, I love the, I love the, the, the flavor and the, the scent of the uh, red wine vinegar. People always say I never measure everything, so I'm going to measure right here on video. So we got one. Tablespoon. I got two tablespoons. If that's all you want, that's fine. It might be enough vinegar. I'm going to go with three because I've got a bunch more spinach to add. And the third one wasn't exactly that one. Completely full, but three would be fine.
And you know, it's, it's funny, I'm not a fan of vinegar. I don't use vinegar in a lot of things. This is one case where I really, really think it, it really adds. So I know you're still thinking, oh man, this is this is enough for an army. No, not even close. Now I can start to get some of that wet spinach on the bottom, bring it up on top, get it all nice and stirred in, and get that last scapey there. Okay. So I don't end up turning the spinach into complete mush when this is all done. I don't want to get the leaf spinach too close to the burner. I've got five to six ounces of cream cheese at room temperature. Um, really depends. I like I like the creaminess, so I'm going. I'm going to town and put all all six in here. Just cut it in little cubes. Just need to get them on the ground floor of this operation so they start to melt. So really, I'm not sure what made me think of this because I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I really can't be sure. Maybe I read it subconsciously, but um, the the idea of using a roux for cream spinach, it, it's really too flat, you know. The cream cheese is definitely has better texture. These little cubes are really starting to melt quick. Kind of work this as quick as I can. Now, if you noticed uh, in the beginning when I was talking about the onion, I actually had both red and yellow. Big deal. Yeah, I'm not picky. I love it when a plan comes together. This looks wonderful. I have to confess that I was so desperate to make this that I made it last week for dinner. I just made a single batch to just kind of to have just a little side with, with dinner. And I was like, why don't I make this more often? It's not difficult, as you can see. Okay, now we've got just about everything. Almost, almost. Just a little more cream cheese in here. Still nice and the uh, spinach is still nice and green. It's not all well, yucky. You find those little cubes, just beat them up a little bit, get them all mixed in. I'm going to turn it off because I know there's plenty of heat in this pan. Bernard. So, we really haven't finished making this as exquisite as it should be. 
like if you were at some fancy restaurant. And like I said, I, I like the consistency here. It's got a lot of creaminess to it. If you don't back off an ounce of cream cheese, and it'll taste just as good. But I think you'll find this. Okay, so what do we do now? I still need to add more to the flavor to this. So I need a half a cup of really good, you know, fresh grated Parmesan Reggiano cheese. And I'm going to sprinkle it right in through here. So why does this make such a great side for the holidays? Because guess what? When you're, when, you're, when you're in crunch time, you could have done this up ahead of time, get it out so it's not ice cold, throw it in the oven. Um, I, I like to eat this up a little slower, you know, you'd be the judge of it, but I usually do like 325 or you know, 20, 25 minutes, depending on how big of a batch you've made. <clears throat> I wouldn't, wouldn't microwave it because I think you would just change the consistency of everything. So you see how easy and see how nice that looks now? So, for you great mathematicians, I love this pan. It's a Pyrex pan. It's a 7x9. I think the presentation is great. So what do you think it's equivalent to? Well, it's basically an 8x8. So, you know, instead of 64 square inches, it's 63 square inches. Oh, big deal. But I like the depth of it. It's a full two and a half inches thick. Spray a little cooking spray in there. Well, just scrape this down. Make sure you get everything. The other thing is having that extra liquid in here is really going to help when you heat it up. And if you wanted to butter this pan, you could do that too. It's the cheese in the bottom that I'm smelling right now. Okay. So we're just going to, you can see it, it's not a whole lot in here, you know. Um, you could use a loaf pan if you want, but I just, I like the looks of this. And if they made a squatter dish, I probably would. If I said, if I said you could use an 8 by 8 if you wanted instead. Alright, so how do we make this perfect? Oh, I mean, it is perfect. I just want to sprinkle a little Parmesan cheese on top so we, we bake it in the oven. Get some cheesiness to it. My food, like my jokes, they're real cheesy. <laughs> okay. So, really, for the you know, 15 minutes it took for me to cut up a little onion that was already sliced, chop up some garlic, put this all together, it, it's a great side. And like I said, you can do this up the day ahead. Have it in the fridge, you know, don't ever put anything in the fridge so it's cool a little bit. I know that food and safety, blah, 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 says, you know, you shouldn't let things sit at a certain temperature. Well, okay, I, I understand. But let me tell you, working in a restaurant, you're making homemade uh, cream soups where you don't use a roux. Everything's just like reduced, like cream and milk. Um, you throw that baby in the walk-in cooler and it's going to crack all over the place and it's going to be cottage cheese soup. So, uh, you know, that's why most restaurants do use a roux to make most of their cream stuff. Uh, I'm really sorry I have to wait till dinner to eat this because uh, the smell is great, looks great, presentation, never realized this before. But having a little bit of Bermuda onion in there gives a little color. Um, you know, 
do what you want with the uh, with a cayenne pepper. I said start with a pinch. You can always add, you know, stick your finger in and try it. You can always add more later in the process. Um, I think the nutmeg really adds. In fact, it's funny when I whenever I serve it, people are always like, "Damn, there's a distinct flavor, but I don't know what it is." So it's really good. I'm always like, "It's a little bit of nutmeg." And they're like, "Really? That's kind of crazy," because most people think nutmeg is like well, it's eggnog, right? Yeah, other baking stuff, sweet stuff. <clears throat> nutmeg is not sweet. And let me tell you, um, I love nutmeg. I put in a lot of things. Uh, I think it's it's kind of it's kind of more of a savory thing when you're using it in this. And like I said, uh, don't skimp on the vinegar. You do need that vinegar to really bring out that spinach, you know. Um, so you've got a great side. This is perfect to serve with your turkey and mashed potatoes and gravy and stuffing because it does have some acidity to it. It does have some pop to it. And um, I think this would be really, really, really something easy. And you can, you can, you know, triple this um, <clears throat> if you really wanted to. As you saw, you just take a little more time. Um, quadruple might be hard. You'd probably have to use a different type of pan. If you had a nice 14-inch paella pan or something, yeah, sure, quadruple it. And then that would give you about twice this much. And then if you had a big group, I usually have small groups for the holidays, you know, small family gatherings. So this would certainly work for my intention. Plus, there's always going to be those couple of skeptical people that really won't try it. Or they'll try a little spoonful. But, uh, like I said, this is going to cool down, go in the, go in the, uh, in the fridge. Um, <clears throat> I just got my turkey breast the other day. I'm going to bone that and stuff it. Uh, I used that spinach and wild rice with pistachios. Uh, you can check out that video. I think that works out really well. Um, I'm going to do some uh, scalloped potatoes. Got a recipe um, I dug up. I'm actually going to modify a little bit this time. So hopefully I'm going to be doing that recipe pretty soon. And as a real treat, I'm going to show you something that I made a long, long time ago. I made a uh, hollandaise sauce uh, for, for a family holiday and nobody could believe it because everyone's so used to, you know, you tear open the package. And I'm going to show you the double boiler that I actually get bought so I could make that holiday sauce and I still use it to this day. And that was a long, long time ago. I was like 20. So, anyways, I hope you're enjoying. I really want you to subscribe. I really want you to comment. I really want you to ring the notification bell. I really want you to try some of this stuff. Have fun. Love the comments. I really do. Um, I try and respond as quick as possible. Down in the middle of the night, I'm really sorry, um, but I really do, really do appreciate some of them. I love advice. Uh, um, <clears throat> if you have, you know, I've had people tell me, try it this way. I do try it. If it works better, I'll do it. And if it doesn't work better, it's probably because I'm stupid. But anyway, so I want you to have a great day. I want you to cook something fun. I want you really, really to spend some time. Um, I know food costs are through the roof and everyone's talking about how it's going to change their holidays so I'm really trying to put together some stuff um, so you can still enjoy a great meal and you know keep it keep it in budget and uh, so maybe to cut down just don't invite the in-laws you don't like okay and tell them I said so so have a great day I'll see you next time bye